I had this idea for a while now. Initially, the plan was to get out an actual VHS tape and jerry-rig a Raspberry Pi inside along with whatever necessary. But instead, I figured I'd put the trusty Ender 3 to work. I knew that VHS tape should be large enough to fit a Pi, but throw in a 5015 blower fan, two USB ports and a network extension and it's a much tighter fit than originally expected. While I could easily get away without extending USB and network ports, I figured this will give the professional touch that some of my previous projects have been missing. Anywho, I designed the base in Fusion 360 with the RPI on the very left sitting on a set of standoffs. The fan pushes air through a tunnel towards the only opening at the back. On the very right, there is a spot for the network port extension and two USB ports to the left. I could probably fit another USB port if need be. The fourth one is blocked by the fan, so no four players multiplayer. The base also has a few posts in strategic places to attach the top cover. The top cover itself features a set of four posts that keep the pie in place. Both parts were printed in PLA, which is good enough for prototyping, but you'd better off using PETG. The base took approximately 6 hours to print at 0.2 layer height. The top cover took 4 or so hours. During the printing, my Ender 3 was acting up. The extruder was skipping frequently and I couldn't figure out why. It might have something to do with the filament as this was a brand new roll of a generic cheap PLA. Anywho, the prints came out decent enough so I moved forward with the project. Since this case wouldn't be disassembled frequently, I decided to tap the hose for the top cover assembly. Otherwise, I would use some of those threaded inserts. It's never straightforward when I'm prototyping and so I had to trim the pie mounting posts for them to go through the PCB. Another issue that I had to address was the location of one of the mounting holes for the fan which was off about 5mm. This was easily fixed with a power drill. I'm not sure how this happened, but it turned out that the slots for the USB extension ports came out a few millimeters too small. So I just removed left and right sides, which snapped right off nice and clean. I didn't really know what kind of fit it would be, whether the retro pie tape wouldn't be too loose inside the cardboard box, so I placed a magnet up front. I would fix a piece of metal inside the box that would prevent the case from sliding out easily. Spoiler alert, it turned out that it wasn't really necessary. I made two USB extensions. As you can probably tell, I'm not a soldering expert and FYI, it's kind of hard to shoot work that requires such precision if you run a one-man show. When it came to extending the network port, it turned out that I lent my RJ45 cramping tool to my, I kid you not, twin brother. So no wired connection for the time being. Anyways, I have a Pi 3 with a busted wired network that will end up in here anyways. Next, I fixed the USB extensions with some glue and left it to dry. The network extension thingy sits really tight, so there's no need to glue it. Installing RetroPie is very easy, and I won't cover it in this video, but I have all the links in the description down below. I started the assembly from screwing in the fan. It requires 5 volts, and I'll be powering it off directly from the Pi. I used rubber washers to limit the vibrations, but it turned out to be ineffective. I put a set of aluminum heatsinks to improve cooling performance. Next, I dropped the pie in place and connected USB ports extensions. Originally, I wanted to replace the stock fan connector, but the single-ended pins that I have would have been too tall to fit. Fortunately, the connector that the fan came with required only a little bit of convincing to fit right in. Last, I screwed the top cover put the retro pie tape in the cardboard case and had some fun in the living room. And now onto the mandatory evaluation. First of all, that fan is noisy. It does push quite a lot of air through the tiny aluminum heatsink, resulting in the temperature staying well below 40 degrees, so there's definitely headroom for undervolting the fan while maintaining reasonable cooling performance. Without the fan running, the temp went up to 63 degrees running Jungle Strike. 
when stress testing the CPU, the temp went all the way up to 80 degrees, at which I think the thermal throttling kicks in. But with the fan on, the temperature remained at a very reasonable 45 degrees. The standoffs that the Pi rests on should be a little taller, as right now some of the soldering joints are touching the PLA base. Wider USB port slots have been already mentioned. Chamfered top bolts openings should be a little larger, so the bolt's head would be flush with the surface. Also, an opening for the microSD card slot would have been nice for a more convenient access. Oh, and there seems to be a slight issue with one of the USB extensions. It works perfectly fine when the box sits still like it normally does, but when I start moving it, it temporarily loses connection. Other than that, I consider this project a great success. It's a really cool case for a RetroPie, a dedicated Plex client, or a Kodi-based video player. And when you get bored with your current enclosure, you can easily swap it for a different one. Thanks very much for sticking around. It's really hard to find time to make content when you work full-time and you're a dad who just doesn't want to miss his kid growing up. I do have much more projects to come, so stay tuned. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.